choose to go to the moon in this decade, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. And that's as far as NASA can send an astronaut with 50 years better technology than in 1969. Respect to the depopulation, they're doing a bloody good job of it, aren't they? You're a coward and a liar and a... Bart, how are you, sir? I'm doing good, Chris. How about you? Yes, I'm utterly delighted uh, to finally make your acquaintance. Um, friends at home, uh, Bart Sabrell is uh, iconic in the world of truth. <laughs> and um, where do I begin? Bart's a, a filmmaker, actor. He's a um, truth campaigner. Um, I think, Bart, please feel free to correct me, but um, probably most well known for his work around the uh, alleged NASA moon landings. And if I just put my, lay my table out, Bart, I think like a lot of people, you know, I grew up just believing what I was told and the, the old, uh, what's the old saying? If they can put a man on the moon... <laughs> <laughs> which now probably like yourself, I kind of. Well, I've changed it to if they can fake putting a man on the moon, why can't they, you know, synchronize traffic lights in a capital city of a state where you stop at one, you know, red light, it turns green and the very next one turns red and the next one turns red. They got it exactly backwards. Yes. And I'm like, they can fake putting a man on the moon, but they can't synchronize lights, you know, to save gas, pollution and brake pads. No, they can't. They can't figure that out. Who knows? Exactly. And so uh, I think a while ago now you started to get some videos arise and people were questioning, I think it was the shadows on, on the moon cast from the lander and, and this kind of thing. And that's, that's where my interest sparked because I, I just love things. I love knowing about things. And it's kind of that, you know, once it's out of the box, you, you, it's, you can't put it back in and, unless you're in, in, in denial. And then somehow it was about 10 years ago now or certainly a while ago, I came across your, your, your films. Um, a funny thing happened on the way to the moon and astronauts gone wild. You know, three guys got into a tin can, filled it with fossil fuel, traveled across this, you know, vast void of allegedly, I, I, I don't know the distance myself, but they say about 300,000 miles. And, and then not only that, but they said, right, Mikey, baby, you, you, you hold this thing in orbit, orbit. Me and Buzz here, we're going to get into this heap of junk that, you know, I know it looks like a homeless person's shelter, Mikey, but no, believe me. We're, and, and Mike's there like, what are you going to do? Oh, we're going to go across to that, that planet over there that no one's ever been on uh, with 1960s technology, you know, less technology than, 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 than in a calculator. And we're actually going to set this thing down. Oh, what are you going to do when you're yeah, like serious, you know, scientific experience? Oh, no, we're going to fuck around. We're going to, you know, play golf and and spin around in our go-kart. Go-kart? Oh, yeah. Didn't we tell you we like we, we got a car in there as well? <laughs> it's uh, I know I'm mixing my uh, Apollo missions here, folks, but you, you, you get what I'm saying. And then and then following all of that. No, no, no kind of real explanation of the, the intense heat that you must experience up there and the radiation going through the belts. Um, but then you get back into this <laughs> homeless person shelter, rock it off. And Mikey's up there. Wait, just happens to be perfectly time waiting for you. And then you dock, <laughs> you, you dock with the lunar um, uh, module or, or, or whatever whatever it was called and then you climb back inside and uh, it, uh, you could be forgiven Bart for saying that sounds such a fanciful story that like no one would ever believe it and yet um, people do what do we say 
Well, I'm with you. I mean, uh, you can prove it through deduction that they didn't go to the moon because what they're claiming is that today with 21st century technology, the farthest that NASA can send an astronaut from the Earth is 250 miles. So if you can imagine wherever you live, a city 250 miles away, make that vertical. And that's as far as NASA can send an astronaut with 50 years better technology than in 1969 when they claimed to have gone to the moon. So what they're really claiming is that in 1969, when all of NASA's computers combined had one millionth the computing power of a cell phone, they went a thousand times farther than they can go today. Now, seeing how it's impossible for technology to go backwards, it means the claim is false. That's like Toyota saying, hey, in 1969, you know, we built a car. It could go 50,000 miles on one gallon of gasoline. But darn, today, 50 years later, the best we can do is 50 miles or 1,000 the distance. How can technology be 1,000 times more powerful 50 years ago than it is today? That doesn't really make any sense, does it? I mean, when they first uh, flew over the Atlantic, that was 1927. And just 10 years later, there were thousands of aircraft flying across the Atlantic. And then I think they were 100 times more complicated than the aircraft 10 years earlier. And then when they blew up the atomic bomb in 1945, just 10 years later, it was 1,000 times more powerful. So if they could go to the moon on the first attempt with one millionth the computing power of a cell phone, they would have been on Mars 10 years later. We'd be in another solar system by now, and there'd be bases all over the moon. So the fact that there aren't bases on the moon means it can't be done. And it's impossible to have 1,000 times greater capability 50 years ago than you can today. I mean, you can prove it without looking at a single picture. And then if you want a picture, it only takes one to prove that they didn't go to the moon. And if you want me to share your screen, I'll be glad to show that picture. I mean, uh, is that all right with you? Um I think that will throw off our recording. Oh, okay. But, but, well, but that's don't... okay. It says it's disabled. But basically, <laughs> you can go to Sibrel, S-I-B-R-E-L dot com, and you can see this for yourself. I mean, there's a picture allegedly from the last mission to the moon where an astronaut shadow is going in the 12 o'clock direction. And then there's a rock about five feet away that's going at the nine o'clock position, which is a 90 degree difference in shadows from objects five feet apart. So just go outside on a bright sunny day and have you and a friend stand a few feet apart or look at two telephone poles or two trees and you'll see the shadows run parallel it's impossible for them to intersect in sunlight when the sun's 93 million miles away and all the shadows on the whole continent or moon are going in the same direction so when they intersect at 90 degrees from objects five feet apart take it from a filmmaker whose lifelong career is to make fake scenes look real, that intersecting shadows is, is electrical light. That's what it means. That's all the proof you need, that and deduction. And then you have the crazy you know, fact that NASA, out of their own mouth, Don Pettit, an astronaut, said so. They deliberately destroyed the technology that went to the moon on the first occasion. Now, why would they do that? I mean, the B-52 bomber that was built 70 years ago, and there's still 200 of them in service because they work so well. I mean, maybe they should have destroyed the technology of the atomic bomb after they used it to win World War II, but they didn't do that. They cherished it. and It was a thousand times more powerful 10 years later. So why would they spend an equivalent of $200 billion dollars? to make the first rocket that goes to the moon, it works fabulous. And then they throw the hardware, the schematics, the electronics, the blueprints in the garbage. The fact is if they really went, they would never do such a thing with the $200 billion investment. But if they committed a fraud, that's exactly what they would do. So the fact that they destroyed all the evidence of the moon landings is actually proof of the fraud. Because if they really went, they would never do that. And if they committed a fraud, that's exactly what they would do. Yes. And also, I think um, once you start getting into the weeds with people and trying to argue the, the science and the technology, there's, people have always got to come back because there's so many of these um, funded documentaries that, you know, guess who funds these documentaries to dispute anyone that questions the narrative. We saw it after, uh, can I say, events that may or may not taken place in uh, American capital cities 20 years ago, we, we saw the same 
Um, they're allegedly produced by, you know, the, the intelligence agencies. Um, but I, I go the other way. I look at human behavior, not just the way that these astronauts, but they behave really strangely, not just when they came back under interview, but also when they were subsequently interviewed through their lives. Uh, Neil Armstrong famously was a recluse for many, many, many years. Buzz is just, you know, um, he's just like went a bit strange. Um, but also the, the other side of the coin, the public, who as we've seen for, I would say, the last couple of years, will literally just believe anything if they're told it from the television set. Um, yeah, I talked to a lot of people. They, they say, I know the moon landings are real because I saw it on television. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. You know, there were 200 eyewitnesses to the Kennedy assassination, you know, a few feet away from it, and they still got away with it when everyone said the gunshots did not come from where they claimed to have come. So what we have in this case is no eyewitnesses whatsoever, except three government employees. And there's no independent press coverage, just a TV picture that they claim is coming from the moon. How, how can you verify it? You can't. So it's actually really easy to have faked the moon missions. And then you have everybody predisposed to wanting to believe it. You had the Vietnam War going on. And Nixon, who was president at the time, said the number one problem with America is Americans protesting against the war. So he threw him a bone of a pep rally. And because he knew they were faking them, the guy doesn't even show up for the launch. I mean, think about this. You're president of the United States. They're going to the moon for the very first time and you don't show up for the launch. Now, after they got away with faking it one, two and three times, then the guy shows up for the launch on like the fourth time now that he knew he could get away with it. So and then not only do we have photographic evidence and logical evidence, we uncovered classified footage of them faking part of the photography right in front of your eyes. Now, the book Moon Man at Sabrell.com, it's kind of an interactive book. It is in print and Kindle and also audio. And after a chapter or so, it says stop. Now go to Sabrell.com, click on the top left buttons, Moon Man video links, and watch this film so you'll know what I'm about to talk about. And there's 15 links in the book, one of which uh, goes into pretty good detail about this fake photography that we uncovered. I was producing the film under the theory it might be true that they faked it. In fact, my million dollar production was financed by a board member of an aerospace company who builds rockets for NASA, who knows that it's fake. And he felt it was his patriotic duty to support the production of these films to expose this horrendous government fraud. So about three and a half years into the seven year project, I'm looking for the launch unedited and everything I got from NASA is like pre-edited, same footage over and over again. So I pop in a tape that uh, Bill Casey, a whistleblower at NASA, uh, believes that another whistleblower sent to me. And uh, it says on, you know, immediately do not show to the public on the screen. And I'm like, oh, this should be good. So I hit fast forward and instead of seeing multiple edits, like I normally do, I see this same shot for almost an hour. It's a little blue ball of supposed to be the earth floating in space, allegedly, you know, with black all around it. Well, we have the unedited version where the lights come up and you see it's a one foot model of the earth. And then on a third track of audio it is the CIA telling the astronauts how to fake the shot. You see, they can't leave Earth orbit. You're going to hear them discuss the very same thing because they thought these conversations would be edited out. Mind you, this is an unedited reel, an hour and a half long, and they only showed the public about 20 seconds of it. But we have all the private conversations, the outtakes of the mistakes, and the CIA telling them not to talk until four seconds go by to create a fake radio delay as if they're halfway to the moon, when in fact they're in Earth orbit. So here they are discussing the fact that this is not live, as they we were led to believe, but actually uh, edited, prearranged special effect. The camera is really away from the window. This is what you're seeing in a minute, but these are the walls of the spacecraft in Earth orbit. And then here's the window of the spacecraft, outside of which is the Earth shine coming very brightly through, filling the whole window. And they put a little photograph 
of the earth over here. And then they inserted a little crescent piece of black material to make it look like what's called the Terminator line dividing night and day. So this is the footage that NASA claims and Neil Armstrong is about to claim that this is genuine footage of being halfway to the moon. All right, Roger, Houston, Apollo 11. Calling in from about 137 miles out. But this is the part they thought wasn't being recorded and never to be broadcast. This is the unedited reel. This is a work light inside of the spacecraft here. Either that or it's a giant UFO, right? <laughs> Floating around the Earth, right? And now you're going to see them remove part of the crescent insert and the photograph in front of the window. That's uh, Buzz Aldrin doing that right there. Faking it. They also say this is the way 10 did it. Apollo 10 faked it the same way. And then you're going to see the real location of the Earth and the window. And the window is actually, that's the window right there. So all the time, this was the window of the spacecraft. See how bright the Earth is? This is Earth shine. They're in Earth orbit, right? They just said that this shot, you know, was 130,000 miles away from the Earth, right? According to NASA, and this is one of the clips in the book, Kelly Smith in 2014 said that the technology to leave Earth orbit in a manned vehicle has yet to be invented. So then how could they possibly go to the moon? And so the part of the mission that they're faking in this classified footage we uncovered is them pretending to be halfway to the moon. So they have the CIA on a third track of audio reminding them when NASA talks to you, don't answer immediately because you're really only 250 miles above the Earth. And with an expected radio delay, if you were really halfway to the moon, there'd be a two second delay out and a two second delay back. So if you answer right away, it'll give away the fact you're really close to the Earth. So they basically heard NASA ask them something. The CIA in a private earpiece counted off one, two, three four and then you hear talk they're being prompted when to speak after they create a fake four second radio delay and then the lights come up you know they only showed 10 seconds of this footage and we got the unedited version and it's a one foot model of the earth that they're creating you know in the spacecraft in earth orbit they can't leave earth orbit and what a surprise 50 years later they still can't leave earth orbit and then we have, as I'm editing this book, Moon Man at Sabrell.com, I worked on the book for 15 years, collecting all the information. It took me two years to edit the book. As I'm editing the book, I am contacted through somebody who was there at the time Apollo 11 was filmed at a particular secretive military base, which is disclosed in the book. This person gave a deathbed testimony that they personally stood beside President Johnson on June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of 1968 at this particular military base while they filmed Apollo 11 a year in advance. He gave us the CIA code name for the real Apollo project, the location where it was filmed, the dates it was filmed, and a list of 15 VIP eyewitnesses who he was allowed in to observe what was going on, one of whom was President Johnson. And now we know why President Johnson didn't run for re-election in 1968 when he was eligible. He refused. The Democratic Party said, well, we're going to nominate you anyway. And he says, I'll refuse. Well, he knew in the next term they were going to fake the moon landing. And who knew that would work? Maybe it would work. Maybe you'd get caught. Can you imagine being from Texas where half of the NASA equipment is and you're president and you got caught faking the moon landing? He didn't want to have anything to do with that. So this proves the whole, you know, Democrat versus Republican is a complete lie. So we fight each other instead of going after the corrupt people at the top because President Johnson is the one who filmed the faking of the moon landing. And he was a Democrat and then Republican Nixon gave it the thumbs up and was too scared to even show up at the launch. Because if the truth came out for all time, there would be a picture of him smiling and shaking Neil Armstrong's hand when he knew he weren't there. So he literally distanced himself from it and didn't even show up for the first launch to the moon in his own country. I mean, that's mind boggling. So not only do we have logic evidence that they can't have 1000 times greater capability in 1969 than we do today, we have intersecting shadows, which are simply impossible to have happened in you know, natural sunlight. Then we have classified footage of them faking 
being halfway to the moon right in front of your eyes. And then we have a deathbed confession of a guy who was there who said, I I witnessed them faking it. And then when I'm following up this information with his surviving relative, the CIA breaks into his house, steals all of his documentation and threatens him with death if he ever talks to me again. So all of this is outlined in Moon Man. So a third of the book is kind of the how and why we didn't go to the moon. A third of it is stuff I've never talked about. You know, when I found this secret tape in 1999, I was followed. I was drugged. I was kidnapped by the CIA and I escaped. I peed in a cup. I gave it to a friend to take to a lab in his name so that I, you know, trying to out with the CIA, <laughs> silly me. And uh, a couple of days later, when he calls back, because I was going to prove, you know, that I'd been drugged with this truth serum, you know, and uh, then he calls back and says, well, there was a problem at the lab. And I'm like, oh, what was the problem? He says, well, they had a break in over the weekend. And I'm like, yeah. And he said, well, strange thing. The only thing stolen was your urine sample. So my espionage adventures are in there. And then the last third is, look, I've proven beyond a doubt that the moon missions are fake. What does this mean? It means the people who run our government are criminals. And then it gets even worse because I've asked Chris, by people like you sometimes, well, what difference does it make if they faked it? And I would agree with that if they never killed anybody in the process. It'd be like stealing a Picasso or faking a Picasso or printing a fake $100 bill. If you don't kill anybody, you know, eh, you know, whatever. However, the fact is they murdered the crew that would have been the first crew to walk on the moon. Now, this is not my opinion. This is information I got from the Apollo astronauts surviving widow and the surviving son, who's a 747 pilot. So I think he knows what he's talking about. And I interviewed them for hours, probably seven hours in total. They asked me not to put this information in a funny thing happened on the way to the moon or in the book until after the death of the woman, Betty Grissom. And now I'm free to tell you that uh, Gus Grissom, the man who would have been the first crew to walk on the moon, came home the day before he died and said, "Hun, there's some strange things going on. She said, what? He said, well, for some strange reason, the CIA, for the first time ever, is all over the launch pad messing with the rocket. And then the very next day, he dies in the rocket of an alleged accident. This isn't my opinion. This is the opinion of the dead man's widow and the dead man's son. They are 100% convinced that the CIA murdered the man who would have been the first man to walk on the moon. So what this means is that one third of our income is given to the federal government, who then not only uses it to deceive us, to tell us that the $200 billion they spent to go to the moon, that they really only used about a quarter of that, who knows what the other three quarters they used. And then we finance because, you know, the CIA who killed Gus Grissom and his two colleagues, we paid their salaries and they used some sort of sabotage material that we paid for. So not only... Are they taking a third of our labor to deceive us continually? They're using it to kill our brothers and sisters who are attempting to expose their crimes. This is a dangerous precedent. These are the people who are running our government right now. So far, I think what I've said is acceptable. Now, if we start talking about the current event, and that's my new term for it, the current event that's been going on for the last two years which I believe is disingenuous and a trick to get people to take, uh, you know, a medicine for an illness they don't even have. And seeing how the guy who's promoting that is into the depopulation agenda and the VP of Pfizer says, this is a very strange thing that's going on. This is, this is very serious, you know? I mean, so it's like, Everything improves over time, Chris, right? The, you know, I, I have a, my wife is from the Philippines and we've been married seven years. And so when we started talking to her family, cell phone to cell phone seven years ago, I mean, it was terrible quality, you know, disconnecting every 30 seconds. And then it, it just gets clearer and clearer and better and better. So not only does technology prove over time, meaning <laughs> we should be in another solar system and there should be bases all over the moon, uh, evil improves over time. So they killed Kennedy in front of 200 eyewitnesses and 75% of Americans agree that Oswald did not kill Kennedy. Nobody cares.
Nothing is done about it. Then you have, what is it? 3,000 engineers and architects risk mm -hmm. their reputations, their livelihoods for saying it's impossible structurally mm -hmm. for a pinhole airplane to cause a skyscraper to come down. And then you have uh, this little you know, scenario going on now, and they're only just getting better and better and better and better. I mean, they can't even release the Kennedy assassination files. And I don't know why the American public let them write this law. I mean, the only reason why they wrote the law that allegedly says they released the files, which they never did. If you read the law carefully, it says they don't have to. Is because Oliver Stone made a film that upset Americans so much about the fraud of the Kennedy assassination that they demanded that the files be released. So they said, OK, in 1999, we're going to release the files in 2017, 18 years later. So but the law says that the files will be released in 2017 unless the current president at the time decides not to. Well, what kind of law is that? That's like saying, Chris, I promise to never hit you unless I change my mind. I mean, I don't, these are the laws of our country. And so something's going on here because William Benny worked for the NSA for 30 years. And I just linked his website in a description of one of my videos and I got a strike. You cannot go to WilliamBenny.com. It will not let you go through. At least I haven't been able to go through. And William Benny worked for the NSA for 30 years in upper management. He goes on a couple of mainstream media channels, Good Morning America, NBC News. And he says, oh, by the way, we spy on the private cell phone conversations of Supreme Court justices so that we can blackmail them into voting a particular way when we get you know, dirt on them of sexual or financial misconduct. So there's not an investigation. I mean, when somebody leaks out that there's a conspiracy uh, to uh, have Clinton win the Democratic primary, even though Bernie Sanders is getting more votes, that the FBI investigates. And they don't investigate the fraud that they're taking, you know, 10 votes for Bernie Sanders and calling it two. They don't investigate that. They investigate the person who leaked the corruption. And yet the guy goes on national TV and says, oh, by the way, the NSA is blackmailing senators, presidents and Supreme Court justices to get them to vote a particular way. Not a single investigation. Now, how can that be? I mean, that is the most strange thing. How can we not? We have a congressional investigation into Johnson and Johnson baby powder to see whether it causes cancer or not. But there's not a congressional investigation into Supreme Court justices being blackmailed, which no one contradicts. How can that be? It's because the president, which is almost always corrupt, has the right, and I think they should not, to appoint the head of the FBI, the Justice Department, the CIA, the NSA, the HUD, the Department of Transportation. So when honest rank and file people underneath them, of which the majority, I believe, are honest, say, look, we've got dirt on the senator, you know, it's taking bribes. And this, they say, don't investigate it or you're fired. I mean, so these I, and I talked about this in the last chapter of the book, what to do about all this mess is that uh, not only should our elected officials be chosen by lottery, like the original democracy in Greece, which lasted 500 years, and I doubt if ours is going to last much longer, uh, that, these, that these departments should not be able to be appointed, the heads of them, by the president. They should be elected from within, because I'm sure the rank and file people at the Justice Department, FBI, knows who's an honest, hardworking you know, member of that group and who is not. So if you keep having corrupt presidents and we keep having them and they keep appointing corrupt leaders of every single department in the federal government and honest people cannot push through that ever, then there's no hope. And that's really the point of the book. I mean, you can pretend that your arm isn't completely covered with gangrene up to your shoulder. You can pretend that's not the case and you will die. You can or you can cut it off. And that's what needs to happen. Somebody needs to come forward and acknowledge that the moon landings are fake. Yeah, maybe the stock market will crash, maybe the dollar will crash. But if you don't, that, that mold that you keep painting over is going to infest and kill the entire nation. And it's already heading that way. And I, in my opinion, there's no hope. Even the Bible says that things will get so bad in the last days 
almost everybody's going to die until God intervenes at the last moment. I take that to mean that the evil people, Chris, they are going to win. They're doing a fabulous job. I don't see how anybody can overcome that without divine intervention. So all that we can do is try to save ourselves from this corrupt generation. It's like the uh, wonderful George Carling said, isn't it? It's, it's a big club and you ain't in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we really should be thankful that we're not in it because the Bible warns us that these people will gain the world and lose their soul. God is not going to let gangsters live forever, you know, and God is very gracious. I don't know about you, Chris, in your country, but in my country, I'm 57 and I, you know, used to watch the news and I watched the news summary maybe once a week just to see what they're lying about. And all that time, I've never seen a uh, criminal, let's say someone who got away with bank robbery or rape or murder, I've never seen them when they've gotten away with it for years, get a conscience and turn themselves in. I've never seen that happen a single time. And yet that's all we have to do to be uh, granted eternal life. We just renounce our sins and try to do better. But so many people are so afraid. And the reason why and I don't know that I've ever mentioned this in any interview before, Chris, but the reason why I called Buzz Aldrin a liar, a coward, and a thief, you know, a liar for obvious reasons, a thief because he just was paid $2,000 for to talk about something he didn't do by our crew, uh, but coward because he loves his vanity more than the truth. He's afraid to look bad. He is cowardly because he is afraid to look bad before the world. Why don't you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon? Please. Why don't you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon? I'm not trying to get you in the middle of anything. tell him to get out of here? This is a hotel. We'll call right, we, the police. So we pay. Come on in not, here, we'll call the police. Solicit you like that? Why don't you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon? I, it doesn't, sir, I, don't, I have nothing to do with this, but okay. you cannot solicit on this property. We just paid right now, to rent out the penthouse to shoot up there. So. You can't solicit like this on this property. Keep, keep, keep shooting. All right, well, then I'd go through my measures. Yeah. you got to keep shooting, man. Okay, well, if you can put it on your shoulder. Don't be shy. You're the one who said you walked on the moon when you didn't. Calling the kettle black, if I ever thought of it. Saying I misrepresented get it myself. Away from me. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. You know, the Bible says David, a man after man, God's own heart, committed adultery and murdered her husband to cover it up. And yet he repented and God is gracious and forgiving. So my hope and prayer is that one of these astronauts will come forward, set the record straight and help himself help our country to heal it'll be messy but we we don't have any choice we have to cut off that gangrene otherwise we're we're gonna die as a nation mm. yes uh, on a positive uh, uh, especially off the last 24 months a lot of people if i can use the term awake are really starting to what well, they call it the great awakening don't they there's a, a there's a lot of people kind of stuck in the middle, like they realize something Mickey Mouse is going on, but they, they were a bit reluctant to leave. I call it the matrix, but they're a bit reluctant to leave that world. But there's a lot of people really want to push forward into, um, I guess, what you'd call um, a, a more enlightened way, uh, way of living. But if I can ask you, what, what, when did you first start to think something's not, not quite right in the world? Well, I grew up believing it was real. I was four years old and it was past my bedtime when they walked on the moon, allegedly. So I was asleep in bed. Now, my father was in the Air Force and he was an officer and he got a VIP package of, I think, about 20 nine by 12 color prints from Apollo 11. He gave them to me. It was my cherished present. I had them up on my bedroom wall from age four to 14. I saw them every day for 10 years. That's 3,650 times. I saw the images of men on the moon, and I believed it to be true. Then when I was 14, Bill Casey, who was a whistleblower at NASA for Rocketdyne, said they didn't go. He had top security clearances. He edited these confidential memos going from the Pentagon to Von Braun to correct the grammar to make them look more intelligent than they really were. 
And uh, he read, a, you know, an estimate from Von Braun to the Pentagon, and he designed the rocket. Remember that the odds of them going with 1969 technology was a one in 10,000 chance. So when I watched a TV show of him saying this, I, you know, thinking, huh, interesting. I'm an open minded 14 year old. You know, the Bible says pride prevents you from seeing the truth. And what is pride? It's simply the unwillingness to be wrong, just as humility is the willingness to be wrong. So I went back and looked at these pictures. Mind you, these were prints from 1969. NASA has since touched up these pictures. But in the original pictures, the soil was very much a caramel brown color. And the backdrop was this kind of bluish gray. Right now, they corrected that and the soil is bluish gray and the background is bluish gray. But in these original prints, if you can get them off of eBay or get a library book, uh, you know, from the 1970s, early 1970s, you'll see the soil is brown as it actually is on the moon. And it just looks gray because of the sun beating down on it. And uh, the backgrounds <laughs> looked, you know, blue. And you could kind of see pretty clearly where the real soil was and the fake backdrops were. And I saw it in every picture. It's like my eyes were wide shut. I just assumed they were on the moon. So I didn't look at them critically. And once I looked at them critically, all these things, you know, like this famous picture of allegedly Buzz Aldrin. You can't even see his face. So it's probably not him standing with his arm bent casually at 90 degrees, which today when they go repair something, uh, out of the space shuttle, they have to have metal joints, accordion joints, because you can't bend your arm without them in a pressurized suit. So how many wrinkles are in a balloon? Well, there's none. And there's wrinkles all in this guy's suit that's supposed to be pressurized. It's not pressurized because they can't do it because the, you know, they're designed for one six gravity. The guy would fall over backwards if they had the air conditioning unit in it. So that kind of planted the seed in my mind, Chris. And so 10 years forward again, I'm 24. I'd become a filmmaker and I'm actually editing one day for the man who produced the show I'd seen. 10 years earlier. And I said, do you remember that guy in your show who said we didn't go to the moon? He says, no, call the San Francisco office. I did. They said, good thing I called in because they were about to throw away all 10 year old files to make room. And so I called up the guy, uh, Bill Casing. He said, hey, you're a filmmaker. You should make a film about this. So I took off about six months, discovered that two of the three astronauts never give interviews, you know, the first mission. The Soviets were much more advanced. I mean, they launched the first satellite, the first animal, the first man, the first woman, the first spacewalk, the first crew of three, the first of two spacecrafts at the same time. For every 10 hours we spent in space, they spent 50 hours. And they were so much more advanced, they didn't go to the moon. Then I find out the administrator of NASA, who's about to you know, put this big feather in his cap and say, look what I did. He resigns before the first Apollo mission. Isn't that interesting? And then you look at the behavior of the astronauts at their first press conference. And instead of looking like victors and the winning locker room of the Super Bowl, they look like they're at the funeral of their mother because they're lying through their teeth. They don't want to do it, but they're doing it anyway. And I'm thinking, you know, there's at least a one out of four chance that they fake the moon missions. Now, that may seem small, but if the police knocked on my door and said, oh, your new neighbor, well, there's a one out of four chance he's a homicidal maniac. Just thought I'd let you know. Well, suddenly one out of four, you know, that's a sobering amount, <laughs> you know, and a one out of four chance that they faked the greatest event in human history. And that means our government is that corrupt. That's that's a notable percentage. So when I did this preliminary investigation over six months, it kind of scared me because I love puzzles. I kind of have, as you figured out in Astronauts Gone Wild, kind of a relentless, never give up personality. And I thought, well, if anybody could figure this out, I could. And then I thought, if they really didn't go and I start overturning these rocks, that could be dangerous. <laughs> you know, so mm -hmm. I actually turned it down. I said, I want to have a wife and family someday. Why should I risk my life for what Nixon did? So I said, no, I think I'll pass. Another five years go by, had another client, this time a Christian musician, and they knew I was a filmmaker trying to do a feature film. And they said, hey, I'll get your script to this you know, famous producer in Hollywood if you do me a favor. I'm like, what favor? They wanted me to read the Bible. And so they got me a one-year Bible. It's basically the Bible divided into 365 calendar days about 15 minutes a day. And I ended up reading that five times from cover to cover over the next five years. Now, I wasn't a Christian. However, it did 
you know, lay a foundation of their, you know, things don't make themselves. A flower and a bee can't evolve knowing of each other when they need each other. And when you see an autopsy of a human body, I mean, it's designed. Cars don't make themselves. Just because we can't understand something doesn't mean it's not true. And it makes sense that there's a judgment for how you live your life, right? And it makes sense that if God can create you out of thin air and God is eternal, that God could give you eternal life if he wanted to. So it kind of developed in me this understanding that's clearly outlined in the Bible, which if you end up reading it, the problem is people don't read it. They put the Bible in the same box with hypocritical preachers who get caught having sex, you know, in the airport bathroom. (laughs) And so they don't want to have anything to do with it. But when you read it for yourself, you know, it's pretty simple and it's not flattering at all. Every hero in the Bible makes grievous sins of like murder, incest, adultery, lying, stealing. And uh, so if we're written by men, I'm sure they'd polish that up a bit. But it does, you know, show that there is a struggle between good and evil, light and darkness. Jesus faced that all the time. The people who hated him the most were the religious leaders. I mean, it's, it's um, uh, you know, pretty remarkable. So I got this understanding there is good and evil. There is light and darkness. There is truth and lies. And if I said they faked the moon missions, I realized, Chris, that that's actually more profound of an event historically than if they'd actually gone. I mean, if you weigh out the two, okay, we can plant a flag on the nearest rock, or we lied about it, murdered people, embezzled money. If that happened, that's actually more significant than if they had actually gone. And I realized if that's true, this is important. I'm going to die anyway, so I might as well die for a just cause. And that's what people in the government who know about this little current scenario being fake, who know about JFK or the moon landing or whatever, they need to come forward because they they are going to die. And how do they want to be remembered for all time? Cowardly or taking a stand. So after I started investigating this film and got financed by a board member of an aerospace company who built rocket for NASA, who knows it was fake, I'm still producing it under the theory it might be true. I pop in that tape that says, don't show to the public at the beginning that contains fake photography never before seen. And it dawns on me, Chris, they really didn't go to the moon. Mm-hmm. So in a, in a, you know, a frantic you know, alarm. I call it Bill Casey. I'm like, they really didn't go. They really didn't go. And he's like, well, Bart, I told you. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. They really didn't go. He says, well, Bart, I told you. And that's when strange things started to happen, which I outlined in the chapter called the funny thing happened on the way to CNN, where, you know, I was followed from church. My car was zapped to where it was disabled. At one time, brake fluid was taken out of my car. My cruise control was fixed in such a way that it just kept accelerating and would not stop. Uh, so very strange things have happened that I'm disclosing for the book for the first time, because I hope to this be my final statement on the matter. And so I eventually, you know, dawned on me that they really didn't go to the moon. And I just quietly wept. I'm like, oh, this is the world I live in. How pathetic. And most people, when I when, you know, they just won't accept it. They say, well, our government wouldn't lie about such an important thing. John McNamara, defense secretary, admits they did so, which led to the death of a million people. So I think if they're willing to fake the cause of justifying killing a million people, I think they're willing to fake a TV picture. And the interesting thing is, Chris, even though the Kennedy assassination, the Vietnam War, 9-11 and this little current scenario killed many more people than the moon landing fraud did. If the moon landing fraud comes out, it'll have greater impact than any of the others. It'll be like the finger coming out of the dike because people got down on their knees and prayed for the astronauts. They waved their flags. They gave them ticker tape parades. They gave them medals of honor for lying. Our heroes are liars. They put it on coins. They put it on stamps. It's in our museums and it's all a lie. If that comes out, I think that will crush the hearts of Americans in a good way, because you have to tell the truth for there to be recovery. Otherwise, these lying criminals will be in charge forever. It hasn't ended there, though, Bart, has it? Because now we've got all this SpaceX stuff. My take on it is 
when your projection is to land on another planet because of finite resources on Earth, what you're essentially saying to the public is trash the Earth. Don't worry. We, we, you know, we're going to settle on Mars and we'll get some, I don't know, bloody uranium up there or precious metal, or what, whatever. And it's what, what, what's your take then? Because I don't know if you saw the faked SpaceX footage uh, where the two rockets were coming down, they had a camera on each. These are the returnable boosters that land on a, I think they landed on a ship in the ocean or some um, l- launch pad as well another time. And and what had happened is on the YouTube video, somebody realized that the left camera on the booster coming down was the identical footage on the right one. It had just been delayed by four seconds. Um and then an even stranger thing happened is that they were allowed, and you you know this being a content provider, you, you cannot edit a YouTube, you you know, you, you can take bits out of a YouTube video when it's up using the editing facility, but you cannot re-upload the same video under and keep all the, the statistics. And and what had happened is once this this guy called it out and said, look, it's the same camera. It's just, they've just delayed the, the left booster by four seconds. The video changed. And the next day they'd got a completely different um, camera coming down for the, for the left booster. And well, you, you can't change a YouTube video. So. Well, I would uh, say that the, you know, the, uh, another facet of that should be the following. Elon Musk, bless his heart. And I, I believe the guy's sincere. So if you're watching, I believe he's sincere. He's got a copy of Moon Man himself. And uh, I think he knows very well they didn't go to the moon, but he has dreams of putting rockets into space and he needs NASA's help. So he's not fucking the boat. I can't exactly blame him for that. The interesting part is, though, with 21st century technology, which is one million times greater than what they had to put a man on the moon in 1969, it took him six attempts to land a rocket vertically. As you know, the first five blew up. Now he had six computer controlled engines working simultaneously on all six sides of that rocket to land it vertically with 21st century technology. The first one blew up, the second one blew up, the third one blew up, the fourth one blew up, the fifth one blew up, and then allegedly on the sixth one, it landed. So it took six attempts with one million times the computing power of Apollo to land a rocket vertically. So how did they land a rocket vertically the very first time they tried with one million the computing power 50 years earlier when 50 years later with one, mil- with one million times greater commuter- computer technology they can't do it the first five times they try. So there's something out there, don't you think? Yes. Well, I, I, I more than think. Um, uh, what I'm coming to realize is there's there's faith, blind faith, et cetera, et cetera. But, but then there's gnosis and, and gnosis means knowing. And it's once you once you know yourself, then then you can know the planet, then you can know the universe. And, you, you know, you don't have to sell anything to me, but your book, by the way, was just excellent. Friends at home, I'm going to put a link for Bart's book below. Yeah, you like when you know, you 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 know, it's not about like digits and data and science and Van Allen. It's not about it. when when you know, you just know. You you either see it or or, or. it's like that picture. There was a picture in the '90s. It was made up of lots of tiny dots and some were bigger than others. Some, some of the pictures, they were, the dots were green and red and did da, da. And you looked at it and, and you just saw dots. I only ever saw dots. And my, my friend would carry it around, uh, to our business presentations. And you say, you see this folks, I'm actually looking at a spaceship. There's a satellite here and th- there's the, you know, the moon in, but I'm guessing most of you just see dots. And, and he said, our business is like that. You either see the vision or you don't. And, and that's very much how I, 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 I experience life now. Uh, I would like to get back to the point that if I'm right, that even though the, the moon landing fraud killed the fewest number of people, and yet 
would have the greatest impact of change if the truth were to come out because it's more emotionally bound in people. Uh, so there would be more of a shock for the truth to come out and therefore bring the greatest amount of good. I'm wondering, you know, you said something about once it's out of Pam's door and Bach, it can't go back. And yet Joe Rogan, who I believe is sincere, by the way, he first said he thought the moon missions were real. Then he said, uh, I think they're fake. And now he's back to their real again. I mean, I'm like him. I grew up believing they're real. So we both went through that experience. And then when I was making my film, he heard about it. He called me up and said, hey, Bart, I'd like to uh, support you. What can I do to help the truth get out? And now uh, he says they're real again. I mean, that's like me being in the audience of David Copperfield, seeing an elephant being levitated and just, wow, I mean, that's just amazing. And then David says, OK, now come backstage, be my assistant and see it from this point of view looking out at the audience. And I see the crane and the mirror blocking the crane. And I'm like, oh, that's it. <laughs> oh, how stupid. And then he says, now go back in the audience and be ready to be fooled and amazed again. It's not possible. So I find it odd that the top two podcasts, Joe Rogan and Alex Jones, uh, have not had me on to reveal that we have a deathbed confession who was at the military base when Apollo 11 was filmed. Don't you think that's breaking news? It seems to me that I must be right. Because if the truth about the moon landing fraud comes out, it would have the greatest impact on change in the government. I showed the tape of the fake photography to an NBC news director who turned pale white, fell back in his chair and says, oh, my gosh, they really didn't go to the moon. And I said, yeah, what are we going to do? And he says, I can't air this. It'll cause a civil war. I'm not going to be remembered for all time as the one that caused a civil war. So. I don't think it'll cause a civil war, but I do think it will cause the restructuring in a good way of our government to bring back individual freedom. My argument is that if copper wire can have electricity flow through it left to right, it can flow through right to left. So if we can do top down governing, we can do bottom up governing. I mean, why should the neighborhood association be able to tell me as the property owner that I can't put a garden in my front yard because it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing? Shouldn't I have the greater rights than the resident association because it's my property in my yard? And then the mayor might be a mayor in a city that, you know, has gun carry, thinks, you know, having a sidearm is perfectly fine. But if a neighborhood association unanimously agrees not to have it, you know, and have a no gun zone, I think that's their right. The mayor doesn't live there. So shouldn't the seniority of freedom be at the local level rather than the federal District of Columbia level, which I've never heard of. Why should the governor in Sacramento be able to tell the mayor of Los Angeles what to do and not do in his city? And why should the president in the District of Columbia tell the governor of California what to do in their state? It doesn't make any sense. So I think this whole governance system is simply following the same historical despotic pattern of dictators that has been around for thousands of years and it doesn't work democracies have killed more people in the last hundred years than all the other centuries combined. And we're supposed to be improving over time. So I think this whole system needs to be turned upside down to set it right. And individual freedom needs to be restored. It, this, this whole top down and calling that freedom, that's the exact opposite of freedom. If trickle down economics work, which is basically you give tax breaks to the rich so they help the butler class. Well, then instead of giving $3 trillion to the bankers who are already billionaires who caused the financial problem in the first place and giving the citizen a measly $1,200, which is about half their mortgage payment for one month, I did the math. They could give every citizen over 18 about $20,000, $25,000. What would they do? They'd go out and buy washers and dryers and cars, and that would trickle up to the people who own the billion dollar corporation. So who needs the money more? Let me think. Billionaires or people who are living paycheck to paycheck, which is 80% of the American people. You see, it's exactly backwards. And because it's backwards, they got away with killing Kennedy. They got away with faking the moon landing. They got away with 9-11 because it's backwards. It needs to be the other way around. And if I may add, 
Joe Rogan and Alex Jones afraid to have me on their show? Are they afraid for me to say on their show? I have an eyewitness. He gave us the name of the military base, the dates where it was filmed, the code name for the project, a list of 15 people who were there that when I called one of the people on the list, he called someone at the CIA and had my source's house broken into. We have all that documented. The FBI are involved. The White House was involved. The press secretary, a senator on the United States Intelligence Committee was involved. This is real stuff going on. You would think this would be breakthrough news that Joe Rogan and Alex Jones would want to have me on the show to discuss. Why are they so afraid for the truth about the moon landing fraud to come out unless that's the very thing that would cause the rightful fall of the corrupt government? It seems kind of odd to me. Yeah, I I. I started podcasting because I loved the Joe Rogan show. I watched it back in the early days. I think he had less than 500,000 subscribers. It might, it might have been a bit more. And we all fell in love with that show because he talked about these things, right? It was the stuff, you know, they talked about uh, a certain building that might ha- might or might not have the number seven on it, right? They talked about it all and, and young people loved it because we've been lied to our whole lives and, and then um, what happened, it, uh, you know, the show, his show went over like a million, then it went up to two million, then it went, went. And I think it's really simple, but I think he went home to his wife and said, honey, if I keep exposing this stuff up, like we're all going to wind up in an automobile accident. It's, it's just that I, I really think, but it's that simple. He, he, yeah, I, I, I'm not, I don't know. I mean, I met the guy. I think he's sincere. Alex Jones, I hope he is. Uh, So something's going on. And the thing is, we have to realize, you know, money is not the answer. And I know someone gave me $100 million and said, cook a hamburger and I cook fries, I could be fired. So Mm -hmm. I can understand that, too. I can understand Elon Musk wanting to cooperate to get NASA to help him fulfill his dreams. I, I can't understand that if people are genuinely trying to expose fraud in the government, They don't expose what would make the most amount of change because the greatest accomplishment of mankind is supposed to be putting a man on the moon. That's why it's so historically significant that it's a complete government fraud. That shows the complete blatant disregard for the American people. And another reason why the government keeps making these, you know, propaganda films about how, no, 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 we really went to the moon is because if the truth comes out, the very next thing that's going to be investigated is the Apollo one fire where the dead man's relatives said they were murdered by the federal government. They can't have that come out. The fact is, if they really went to the moon and anyone who says otherwise would simply be an idiot. If I was saying, hey, Chris, you know, the first president of the United States is Mickey Mouse. You think there'd be a thousand YouTube videos saying, no, 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 Bart's wrong. The first president was George Washington. No, speak for itself. It's so obvious the moon landings are real. There wouldn't be hundreds of thousands of hours and millions of dollars invested in thousands of videos to reassure the public that the moon landings are real. I mean, the National Geographic, which is, you know, gets funding from the government, interviewed me, you know, and I proved them wrong to such a degree they wouldn't have me in the program. And then they do the most backwards methodology to prove me wrong when it proves me right. They, they say in their narration, well, we can't duplicate the sun. So they went out to a desert at night, got a spotlight, had a couple of guys dress up like astronauts, and then the shadows intersect. And they say, look, in our simulation of the moon, it's normal for the, uh, for the shadows to intersect. So Bart Sabrell is wrong. Well, wait a minute. You're proving me right because you just duplicated the NASA pictures with an electrical light, which means they, too, were taken with an electrical light. And you can duplicate the sun by waiting 12 hours and going to the same place in sunlight. You really want to know what sunlight looks like with shadows? Then wait 12 hours. Don't use a spotlight, you know, stand out in the sun and you'll see shadows never intersect. So they 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 waited until nightfall, used a big electrical light said, look, the shadows intersect at almost 90 degrees. That proves the missions are real. When that's the very evidence that proves that they were false because they duplicated the NASA pictures with an electrical light, which means they also were taken with an electrical light. All the while, they said it actually proved the opposite. I 
find that a little odd. It's one of the clips in my book where I go into detail and explain this, you know, their proof that proves the fraud, you know, and they're claiming it doesn't prove the fraud, but it's exactly backwards. And I guess people just don't pay attention. I'm not sure. Yeah. And let's not forget that Neil Armstrong basically before he died, he had to say he had to warn the public and, and he did it in that kind of what do you call that? A veiled statement, didn't he? He said there are many truths and truths. Yeah, he- truth many layers and it's obvious what he was talking i mean this is what i'm saying by gnosis when you when you when you see it you 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 understand the language that he's oh yeah this was uh the 25th anniversary and uh he was in the white house and there were a group of students going through and i show this and a funny thing happened on the way to the moon at the very end he has he's holding back tears and sniffles (laughs) and all of the speech he looked down except this part he had memorized. It was the most important part to him of the speech. He's looking down, talking, and then he says, perhaps you'll be able to remove one of truth's protective layers. Hmm. And he is that layer. And unfortunately, if maybe just one man claimed to have walked on the moon, they would have come forward by now. However, one confession, they feel they're ruining the lives of everyone who's still alive, who claimed to have been on those missions. It's kind of, it's one thing to turn yourself in. Yeah, I robbed the bank. Oh, and by the way, here's the names of the other 15 people who helped me. You know what I mean? Which he'd inadvertently be doing by confessing. So I think that's why they haven't come forward. And of course, they think that America would look foolish in front of the world. Well, that's what needs to happen. I mean, how can we move forward if we keep basing our government on lies and criminals they have to be exposed otherwise we're still going to be run by liars and criminals and that's why they don't want the truth about the moon landing fraud to come out because the very next thing is the apollo one fire and when the dead man's wife and the dead man's son says they were murdered by the cia hmm, i wonder if that's related to the fake moon landings hmm, that's our government don't you think something should be done about that but are you familiar with the occult history of nasa and and Werner Ron Brown being an, a national socialist um, and the kind of Masonic. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know much about it, but I get emails all the time. They're all Masons, which I believe is true. They're all 33 degree Masons. Uh, Von Braun, who designed the rocket. Yes, he was a Nazi. Yes, he was responsible for killing hundreds of people in England and apparently hundreds of slave laborers. In fact, the State Department is on record for saying had he not died, I think in 1975, they were weeks away from indicting him for war crimes. How about that? Are those schools in Alabama going to change their name? And then we have publications of Von Braun from, you know, the late 50s, early 60s. And he says, in order to reach the moon, it's going to take a rocket that weighs 800,000 tons. The Apollo rocket weighed 2,500 tons compared to 800,000 tons. He said these numbers are mathematically irrefutable. And then three days after Kennedy oops, said, we're going to go by the end of the decade. He says, oh, I'm sorry, I got my math wrong by 30,000 percent. So would you really trust a guy to build a rocket to go to the moon who makes calculations that are off by 30,000 percent? Or is he a smart liar? Which is it? Either way, they didn't go to the moon. Do you know the uh, coordinates for the moon landing? Uh, They destroyed those, you know, and they destroyed the telemetry data. They destroyed the original videotapes. uh, They destroyed everything. This Which is seems kind of odd to me. And so there's really no leftover telemetry data to show where the rocket really was. Uh, so that's kind of odd, too. You think if, if these videotapes are in the same building with the Declaration of Independence that is 245 years older and they still have that, how can they misplace what I estimate to be about two tons of videotapes? And then they deliberately disassembled and destroyed the only machine that can play back the tapes in the event that they're found they don't want anybody to see it and poor ron howard whose own grandfather warned him the moon missions are fake but he wanted to live in the star trek fantasy world and he was executive producer of a imax film about how great the moon landings are and he called up nasa and says i want those original tapes we're going to transfer them to 8 hd and make them 120 feet by you know 100 feet 
And NASA goes, okay, give us a moment. And then by the time his request was supposed to be fulfilled, oops, they all disappeared. So that in his movie, which is about the moon landings, 95% of it is reenactments because there's so original uh, lack of original footage. And he even used VH tags from Blockbuster because that's all that was available. And he reduced the screen size to like 5% of the IMAX film because if you blew it up, you wouldn't be able to see anything. The detail's so bad. You can even see the VHS tracking lines at the bottom. Don't you find that odd that NASA wouldn't help to have the highest quality pictures shown on the big screen about the moon landing landscapes if they really went and the fact that they destroyed them right before that was about to happen, which could prove the fake backdrops. Don't you find that a little odd? I guess nobody cares. The reason I mentioned the coordinates is the latitude and pe some people at home will understand what I'm saying here. Um, if you don't, you need to read more. Uh, the, the latitude is zero thirty-eight thirty-three. Um, oh, they're trying to use the number thirty-three. Yeah, I mean, apparently thirteen is an Illuminati number. Thirteen colonies, thirteen's unlucky. And so, after they went to the moon the second time, people were disinterested and complaining that reruns of Isle of Lucy were being interrupted. And so, the very next mission had to have life and death jeopardy. You know, like you said about the fuel. Oh, they're running out of fuel. They have to add a little drama to it. So get this, Apollo 13 on April 13th at 1313 military time as this, you know, contrived accident. I mean, they must be laughing while they're doing this stuff. And poor Ron Howard and Tom Hanks. I don't know about Tom Hanks. Isn't it interesting? Tom Hanks in the Simpsons movie, which is about quarantining a city. Uh, and uh, he says the government doesn't have any credibility anymore, so they want to borrow some of mine. And then he's the first person to get this illness to prove the authenticity of the event. Isn't that interesting? They're borrowing some of his credibility because the government doesn't have any. How about that? And he's also in Apollo 13. Mm, isn't that interesting? And apparently one of the Apollo, I'm sorry, the Illuminati, you know, writes is to have men dressed like women. Isn't, wasn't that his first TV show about him and his friend, you know, dressed like women to get cheap rent at an all women's boarding school or something like that. Mm, there's a lot of clues there, isn't it? Well, there's a club in, I think it's Los Angeles. It's called the 33 club. And Tom, Tom is a member, but he's kind of blocked his, well, I say well, blotted, maybe he'll blotted his copybook in recent years. So it's, it, you know, a lot of people make deathbed confessions or, or latter year confessions. Uh, maybe he'll be one of them. Maybe he'll come forward. I, I, he seems like he's, you know, a good guy from what I can tell. He seems like, you know, he's he's playing ball to advance his career. It's done that. But now, you know, judgment day is approaching when you die. Maybe you might want to make a correction here in your trajectory so that you have the hope of living forever because you can gain the world and lose your soul. And then where are you going to be? But the last thing I want to ask you is uh, wh wh what do we think of the Stanley Kubrick allegation that he was the director that filmed all of this? Well, I suspect that's true. I mean, they did fake the moon landing and they had two choices, Chris, they could choose the general of the media department of the Pentagon have great security and amateur results, or they could pick the best filmmaker on the planet, get the short-term benefit of good realistic pictures and worry about security later. That's the choice I would have made. And what a coincidence. In 1968, when the fake moon landing was being filmed at the military base that I disclosed in the book, Moon Man, uh, he was shooting a film about going to the moon. What a coincidence. And then there's pictures of Stanley Kubrick at NASA with, you know, the flight director and the administrator of NASA and all this. And then a couple of years later, he makes the first motion picture ever shot entirely with natural lighting. And how did he get the technological advanced new lens to do that? It was a NASA lens. So he made a good little trade there. And then his last film, Eyes Wide Shut. Remember, I was looking at those pictures. 3,650 times with my eyes wide shut, he insists, for some strange reason, the studio, Warner Brothers, I think, didn't know why, but he insisted that that film, Eyes Wide Shut, his last film, and he even died 
after the contract was signed before it was released. He insisted, almost as if like a deathbed wish, knowing that the end was coming, he wanted Eyes Wide Shut to open on a particular day, July 16th, 1999, the 30th anniversary of the alleged flight to the moon. Hmm, what about that? And then, of course, you know, the little red rum boy from the Shinings wearing a shirt that says Apollo 11. I mean, I I think he's leaving little clues there and maybe one too many because he and a lot of people involved in this seem to mysteriously die at the age of 70, which was his death. And uh, I think maybe they're give you, you know, let you grow old to a certain degree, but they don't want you babbling and drooling and confessing, you know, what's really going on on your heart to get it off your chest. So. Yeah, and of course, the end of uh, Eyes Wide Shut isn't the end that he filmed. They they changed it. Oh, so, I didn't know that. What yeah, was his yeah, yeah. That was the, his original the, ending. Well, we, we're never going to know. Oh, I see. But along the lines of what you're saying, obviously, it was something he was trying to say something. And mm, interesting. I, I, yeah, I, that I, would be that would be the the put the place to put it. Maybe he tracked. Maybe he knew that his time was limited. Maybe he followed the other people involved also dying at the age of 70. And uh, I know for a fact that after he made um, uh, that film, you know, Apollo 11, which is his best work, by the way, he developed this sudden fear of ever flying and going to America again. He wouldn't get on an airplane and he wouldn't set foot in America again. It was really careful. And then his wife, Christine, who I talked to before over the phone for quite a while, she said something really interesting when he died. It was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I remember the day I'm sitting in my office. I turn on my computer. I had AOL top story. Um, Stanley Kubrick dies at the age of 70. And his wife says, quote, there were no suspicious circumstances regarding his death. That's an interesting thing to volunteer. That's like getting pulled over by a speeding ticket after, you know, you left the bank you robbed and saying, I didn't have anything to do with that bank robbery. You know, uh, that does protest too much. It sounded like she was kind of making sure she she let the people know she, I'm cooperating. Uh, please don't kill anybody else in my family. You know, no sur- suspicious circumstances. Regard- and I tried for weeks and months to get the autopsy uh, from the coroner there. Couldn't do it. Dead end. Wouldn't return my phone calls. Nothing. Mm-hmm. I, you know, and I was trying to find out what his last meal was. What did he do his last day? What exactly did he die of? So forth and so on. And it, and couldn't be done. So there might be some hidden little clues that Kubrick might be releasing posthumously. You just never know. <laughs> no, you don't. In The Shining as well, the, the, car, the pattern on the carpet was the, uh, the launch pad. This yeah, car. that's what they say. It does yeah. kind of look like it. And the so, room, room number was, two, was it 279 or 179? Uh, 237. Which- and I think in the book, it was completely different. And Stephen yeah. King, I met him. He was so mad at Kubrick for changing a number. And he thought, you know, that was the worst film of his adaptations when it's really the best. Every other Stephen King adaptation, except for Misery, was terrible uh, that I saw. And he was he was mad at Kubrick, who made his book look the best it's ever looked because he changed a number. It was kind of silly. Mm-hmm. But anyway, <laughs> But what's next for you now? Because you've you've done an awful lot. What are, what what are you going to do? Do you have any plans? Well, yeah. If you go to Sibrel S I B R E L dot com, uh, you can not only see Moon Man. You can scroll down to the bottom. My partner in Israel and I have just released a game. Uh, it's a board game for smartphones and also Steam, Mac, and Windows, all cr- cross platform compatible. Believe it or not, uh, it's called Seven. Chess and Checkers have an eight by eight board. And so this has a seven by seven board with seven pieces each that have to move seven spaces every turn. The game is called seven. You can play anyone in the world or you could play at the computer and you can play Android to iPhone and Mac to Windows, so forth and so on. You can do that. And then I hope to make my first feature film. I'm in the process of raising money to do that. Uh, The script is written. Uh, It was going to star uh very well-known actor who unfortunately had a fear of getting an illness he didn't have, took a medicine for an illness he didn't have. And like four of the people I know personally, something happened to him 90 days later to the day. But in any case, I'm working on that. I want Moon Man to be, you know, my final statement on the moon landing fraud. Uh, 
I, I want to be a feature filmmaker. I want to make inspirational fictional films. And that's what I intend to do next. So check out the game at the bottom of Sabrell.com. Uh, if you know of anybody who wants to give me a million dollars to uh, make my first feature film, I'll give you a 5%, $50,000 commission as a finder's fee. And uh, be sure to get the book, which is on Kindle, audio, and print. And all the video links there you can watch for free. There's 15 of them. And uh, the last one is on the homepage of Sabrell.com. It's my uh, kind of a music video of a song I wrote, kind of overview of all my adventures making this uh, film and uncovering the unfortunate fact that, yes, the moon landings were indeed falsified. Well, I, th I think they say you, you, your work here is done. Thank mm. you. Thank you. You know, thank you for so for your input. Thank you for uh, uh, helping with so many people's uh, uh, awakening. I think you can feel justifiably uh, proud. I wish you all the best with your game, uh, your film, and your book. Friends, don't forget, we'll put a link below for the book. As I said, I listened to it in audiobook. I, I couldn't i listened to it everywhere i went i couldn't i couldn't stop listening uh to it um and i'd encourage you to do do the same and uh, i narrated as well yes and you did and you did an incredible job i was really impressed um it's a i've got i've got five books myself that need uh that i need to narrate i keep procrastinating about it because um hey maybe i, I maybe you can hire me <laughs> <laughs> Until yeah. my feature film is made, I'm a, I might need a salary for something. <laughs> if you can be a, a, an 18 year old English Marine, then. Uh, Hello. You... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go <Governor. Bye>, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but massive, massive. Thank you again. Please stay on the line so I can just um, thank you properly. But um, absolutely in incredible folks. If you can get hold of a copy, I, I'd encourage you to uh, uh, watch a funny thing happened on the way to the moon um, and astronauts uh, uh, gone, gone wild. Are they on Amazon, Bart? Or uh, well, there are three links as part of the book. Uh, once you get the book, there are 15 video links in it. Like I said, I'll read a chapter or write a chapter as you're reading it. And I'll say, stop, watch a video link number one. So you know what I'm talking about yeah. next. And I do these throughout the book to basically back up everything I'm saying Really, all these things aren't my opinion. They're things I've discovered and are qualified people's opinions and eyewitnesses account that unfortunately uh, we did fake the moon landing. And what does this mean? It means our world is run by criminals and maybe something should be done about that. I think so. Friends at home, massive love to you all. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Bought the T-Shirt podcast. If you could please like and subscribe and We'll see you next time.